Hi guys, it's John from Seattle Coffee Gear and today we're going to talk about milk steaming. I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your milk steaming at home uh, and then we're going to make a drink at the very end of this video and maybe even do a little bit of latte art. All right, let's dive in. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do when we're steaming some milk is we're going to choose the right size pitcher. So this pitcher here is about a 20 ounce pitcher. This is gonna be the pitcher for your 12 ounce size drinks, anything 10 to 14 ounces in that range. This is gonna be the pitcher you're using. If you're doing a smaller drink like a traditional cappuccino, maybe five ounce drinks, four ounce drinks, up to eight ounce drinks, you're gonna be using a 12 ounce pitcher, which would be about this size. This will typically be the smallest pitcher that you'll find. And this is great for those smaller size drinks. The next thing that you need to do after you choose your correct pitcher is to fill it up to the proper level. I usually aim for about the bottom of the spout and that tends to give me the right amount of milk for the drink I'm gonna make. As you kinda do your own steaming, you'll realize maybe you need a little bit more, maybe you need a little bit less, but that's a great place to start at. Why don't we get to some techniques now? So here to show you, I have this handy dandy steam wand from one of our Rocket R9 commercial machines. It's pretty similar to anything you'd find on a home machine and all these techni techniques will be the exact same. So don't worry about this being too different because the techniques I'm gonna show you are all applicable across pretty much any machine. So the first thing that you're gonna do when you're steaming, we're just gonna talk about how you wanna position the steam wand when you're steaming. And I like to think of it almost like a football kicker lining up to kick a field goal. So you're gonna make sure your pitcher is flat and level to the, to the ground, and then you're gonna make sure the steam wand is straight on with your pitcher. I'm gonna kind of flip it around here so you can get a better angle. So this is how it's gonna look like right when you start. You're gonna lock your steam wand right in the spout here, and then think about a kicker taking a couple steps to one side before he kicks a field goal. So then you're just gonna switch uh, shift your steam arm to the side there to get it over to the side of this pitcher. Just make sure it's not touching the side. That's going to give you some nasty squealing noises. And then once you do that, you're going to turn it on and start a nice little whirlpool. I'm going to shift these back here. So once that whirlpool is going, you're going to slowly move your pitcher down until you get just the tip of this steam wand slightly above the level of the milk. And that's gonna use these tips on the steam wand to start introducing some air or some foam into your milk. Once you do that for a couple seconds, usually about three to five seconds, all you're gonna to have to do is push that pitcher back up to stop adding that air or aerating and just keep making that whirlpool. And that's called integrating. You're going to be integrating all that foam that you just made back into the milk to make sure you have a nice, consistent, smooth texture. And then as you turn the steam off, you just want to bring it back to the center. Wait till it's all the way off and then tape, take your pitcher out. All right. Now that we've covered some of the basics about technique, why don't we jump in and steam a couple pitchers of milk? I'll be right back with a full pitcher. Okay, so I just went and filled up my pitcher. I have it about halfway full, just right about here. And now we're gonna get to steaming. So the first thing that you need to do before you even start thinking about steaming is make sure that your steam wand is nice and clean. The next thing that you're gonna do is purge your steam wand to get any excess water in here out. Because this is hot steam in here and a metal steam wand, water actually condenses and you get a lot of water built up in there and you don't wanna add that to your nice frothy steamed pitcher of milk. You want your milk to be as much milk and not water as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and purge this. Now that that's purged and I have a nice clean steam wand, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my pitcher of milk. So I have my pitcher flat and level to the ground and I'm just gonna come right up here on the steam wand. You want it to be at a slightly lower angle than I have there. Depends on each machine, but I'm not even gonna guess what that is. And then once again, you're just gonna come straight up with it flat and level to the ground, straight on with the steam wand. And then once you get up there, you're gonna kick it to the right, just like that field football kicker analogy we talked about. And then once you have the tip of that steam wand below the surface, and try to keep it pretty far below the surface so you don't get, e get any accidental aeration right away, you're gonna kick that steam on. 
So that's now going in a nice whirlpool, and I'm gonna slowly drop down my pitcher until I start to hear some of that aeration. And once I think I have enough, that nah, feels about right, I'm gonna move back up, and I'm gonna start integrating that foam just consistently with that same whirlpool I used at first. Once I get to the right temperature, I'm gonna shut my steam off, drop my pitcher down, and make sure I give that a good purge after I do my steaming because this is a very hot steam arm and it can actually dry out milk inside there and that is just a pain to clean and to avoid that, just make sure you purge your steam wand right away after steaming. It's gonna save you from a whole lot of issues down the road. So now I have my nicely steamed picture, pitcher of milk here. What I'm gonna do next is called grooming. So what this involves is doing a quick tap on the counter and that's gonna knock out any bubbles that are in that pitcher. And then you're just gonna give it a good swirl and a couple shakes side to side. You're trying to mimic that steaming motion that you were doing earlier. You'll probably splash a little bit and create some bubbles on the counter, but that's okay. All right, so we're here I have my nicely frothed pitcher of milk and the texture at this point should be smooth and silky. Some people say like wet paint. Some people say like Alfredo sauce. As long as there aren't any large visible bubbles and it looks a little bit thicker than regular milk, you should be doing okay. Now we're going to put it all together and we're gonna make a latte and hopefully we'll even get some latte art. So let's go ahead. All right, so there we go. That's some milk steaming, uh, basic tips and techniques for you to use. Uh, we made a latte with a little bit of latte art. Uh, go ahead and stay tuned for more videos on more milk steaming tips on different machines, uh, latte art tips, hopefully soon to come, uh, and just various other barista tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.